Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and you are joining me again from my home where we are still quarantining but we didn't want to not bring you a show and we've got a great lineup of guests and we're going to start today by talking with Rachel Dean who will give us some really great easy recipes with those items that we all have piling up in our pantry. Rachel? My name is Rachel Dean. I'm the Family Consumer Science Agent with UT Extension here in Sullivan County. I'm here today to talk about some budget-friendly meal options that you can make right out of your pantry and offer you some helpful tips for grocery shopping and meal planning. One thing I would encourage you to do, especially as most of us are making less trips out, we may be shopping for groceries once a week, maybe even less than that, is to shop your pantry, shop your freezer, and shop your refrigerator prior to making that trip out. Taking inventory of what we have on hand helps us know what we actually do need to get at the grocery store and what items we don't need. Additionally, it can help us use up items that may have got scooted to the back of the cabinet that may have a closer expiration date, and it helps us not to purchase duplicates of things that we don't really need when we go to the grocery store. You may have also heard that canned fruits and vegetables are not healthy options and aren't as good for us as fresh fruits and vegetables are. Well, we know that's simply not true, and they can be a really good item to keep on hand right now when we're making less trips out to the grocery store, and the fresh item we might have normally purchased may not even be in stock. When you're purchasing your vegetables, you wanna to try to go for a lower sodium option if that's available, but if it's not or that doesn't fit your budget, you can simply put it into a colander and rinse with water to reduce the amount of sodium. When you're shopping for your canned fruit, Try to find canned fruit that's packed in natural juices or water and not syrup to, to avoid consuming a lot of added sugars. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about are some good suggestions for things to keep on hand in your pantry and some ways you can throw these together and make an easy meal. So as I mentioned, having those canned fruits and vegetables on hand are extremely handy. They're ready to cook, make an easy side item. Canned beans are another really great thing to keep on hand in your pantry. You can add them to a dish that already has protein in it, say your ground beef or your chicken, for some added protein and extra fiber, or you can let it stand alone and be the protein source for your dish. One way to easily use your canned beans is to make an easy burrito bowl. Take some rice, add your canned beans, lettuce, cheese, salsa, and whatever other toppings you might enjoy. These are really great because they are customizable to each family member and they come together very quickly for dinner time. Additionally, canned proteins can be a really good option to keep too. So thinking about your canned tuna and salmon that you can maybe put into a casserole or make into a tuna or salmon burger or your canned chicken. You can add that to any other dish that you would add fresh chicken to. So these are just some suggestions for things to have on hand. And I'm actually going to show you in just a moment how you can incorporate some of those into an easy casserole with items that you already have in your pantry. Hi there, we're gonna create your own casserole. So how you do this is essentially choosing one item from each of the groups that I'm getting ready to talk about. Then you're gonna combine everything and bake. So your first step is to wash your hands for 20 seconds to make sure you've got clean hands prior to cooking. And you also wanna go ahead and preheat your oven to 350. The first thing you wanna do is choose your vegetable. So you can choose a package of frozen spinach, broccoli, or green beans. You can also choose some canned veggies, canned green beans, peas, corn, or carrots make a great option. Or if you have some fresh things on hand, something like sliced zucchini and squash goes really well with this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my broccoli in the bowl. The next thing that you wanna do is choose your starch. So this could be something like two to three cups of cooked pasta or two to three cups of brown rice. I chose pasta for the particular dish that I'm going to make. Your next step is to choose your protein. So you wanna look for two cups of cooked ground beef or ground turkey, two cups cooked or diced chicken, turkey, beef, or pork. You could also use canned chicken if you wanted to. 
You can use a can of tuna or salmon that's been drained, or you can use two cups cooked kidney beans or black beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some chicken to my casserole. The next thing that you're going to do is choose your sauce. So some good options are a 16 ounce can of diced tomatoes or using a can of reduced sodium condensed soup. So thinking like cream of celery, I have cream of mushroom, tomato soup, you mix that with milk to then make two cups. So I have cream of mushroom soup here that I'm gonna mix into my bowl. Then you're gonna stir everything up until it's mixed. You can also jazz up this recipe by adding some additional seasonings. I'm going to add some basil. And I'm also going to add some garlic powder. But you could really add any spices that you enjoy or you could saute some onions and garlic and add that to your recipe too. So once you've got your mixture mixed up, you're gonna spray your casserole dish with nonstick spray Place your mixture into the casserole dish, cover with foil, and place into the oven for 50 minutes at 350. Once you've baked for 50 minutes, you're gonna remove from the oven and add a topping. This could be shredded Parmesan cheese, which is what I'm gonna use for this particular recipe. You could also use shredded cheddar or another cheese you might have on hand, breadcrumbs or crushed up crackers. Then you're gonna bake for an additional eight to 10 minutes and then you're done. Here's your final product. Serve with some more veggies on the side or a side of fruit and a glass of milk for a well-balanced meal. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own casserole. Check out one of our websites, healthyfamilies.tennessee.edu for more recipes, grocery shopping tips, meal inspiration, and easy to follow along recipe videos. Follow us on Facebook at UT Extension Sullivan County for more easy meal ideas and helpful hints. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much, Rachel. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols, and joining me next is Charlene Tipton Baker from the Birthplace of Country Music Museum with some remote events coming our way. Hi Sheridan, thanks so much for having me on the show. I just wanted to let everyone know that everyone at the Birthplace of Country Music feels it's not only important to stay connected to our community at this time, but also to be of service. So one of the ways we are doing that is providing lots of fun and educational content on our Facebook pages. Um, you know, if you visit our website at birthplaceofcountrymusic.org and go to the museum site, you know, there's some educational programming that you can do with your kids at home, uh, some fun activity sheets. If you follow us on social media, you know, the Birthplace of Country Music Museum Facebook page and our Instagram, we've been rolling out some really fun videos with Renee, Dr. Renee Rogers, our head curator, um, who talks about some behind the scenes at the museum, some stories that you may not get to hear on a tour. And, you know, if you follow Bristol Rhythm and Roots Reunion on uh, Instagram or Facebook, you know, there are videos rolling out there all the time. Some artists who are performing at our festival in September um, have been providing us with videos. We are calling the quarantine sessions. We're rolling out golf cart karaoke videos that were shot at the festival last year, which are a lot of fun. And, you know, WBCM Radio Bristol is an, a, a great resource for uh, fun entertainment and lots of education in rare and um, obscure music as far as the programming goes there. And it's everything from old time music and traditional bluegrass to old recordings of garage punk. And you know, it just depends on the show you like. And you can listen to those archived shows on Listen Radio Bristol anytime. You can download the free mobile app and you know you enjoy video from our farm and fun time show um video from radio bristol sessions that were recorded by you know so many artists at the museum 
So be sure and hop on our website at birthplaceofcountrymusic.org and you'll find all that content, links to our Facebook, Instagram accounts, Twitter, and um, YouTube, and just enjoy that content. In the meantime, we hope you all stay safe and we look forward to seeing you again in person as when it's safe to do so. Thanks again, Sheridan. Thanks so much, Charlene. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. Joining us now is Maggie Elliott from Believe in Bristol and she will be talking to us about loans available for small businesses. Hey, it's Maggie with Believe in Bristol. I just wanna take a couple minutes to talk about what's going on with our organization and downtown Bristol. Um, so as you know, there's been lots of changes to downtown Bristol over the last several weeks. Um, if you visit our website at believeinbristol.org, at our homepage, we have a current status of the downtown businesses. Um, this means whether they have shifted all their services to online only or offer online shopping, um, whether they are curbside and delivery options, all of the restaurants that are still open, in, open and offering these services can be found at our website at that homepage. Um, we will continue to update that listing um, as changes occur, whether people are able to open their doors again um, or more people are, are having to close their doors temporarily, we will continue to update that listing. Um, second, for the downtown property owners and business owners, um, they are eligible for a downtown revolving loan fund emergency loan um, in the amount of $5,000, 0% interest, and no payments for up to six months. Um, that application can be found on our website as well on the homepage. Um, those loans are being administered through People Incorporated. Um, their contact information can also be found on the homepage of believeinbristol.org. Um, so if you have any questions as far as eligibility or additional documentation, um, I strongly encourage you to reach out to Jeremy and Shane at People Incorporated and they will be able to walk you through that entire process. Um, and lastly, um, a little bit more positive, um, Border Bash, um, every Tuesday and Thursday for the month of April, uh, we will be offering a social distancing series um, on the Border Bash Facebook page. Uh, we have local and regional artists who have donated their time um, and are streaming some really wonderful concerts on that platform. Um, if you happen to have missed a concert, not to worry. Um, all of those concerts can be found um, saved on the Border Bash Facebook page. So give those a check out um, and a rewatch if you want. There's also links there where you can uh, virtually tip those artists who are donating their time. Um, I encourage the entire Bristol community to support our small businesses where you can. Continue to utilize those curbside and delivery options, online shop from retailers, purchase gift cards now. You can utilize them in person later. Um, anything that you can do to ensure that they will be able to open their doors when this is over um, is really, really important to the success and um, the survival of downtown Bristol. Um, stay safe, stay sane, and we can't wait to see you on State Street, hopefully very, very soon. Thanks, Maggie. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Bristol, and up next, we've got Debbie Richmond and her staff from the Sullivan County Branch House. Hi, we're here at Branch House today honoring Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is April. I'm Deb, this is Davis, this is Mariah, this is Katie, and also the star at Branch House is Moose. Say hi, Moose. Uh, <laughs> We're here today to talk to you about Sexual Assault Awareness Month and what we can do for you at Branch House if you're a domestic violence victim or a victim of sexual assault. In Sullivan County, we have the highest domestic violence rate of any county in the state of Tennessee, and that is also significantly higher than the national average. In addition, uh, Sullivan County is high up on the rate of sexual assaults in Tennessee and also higher in the nation. Now, during April, because it is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we usually go out into the community, we're teaching, we're talking, we're educating people about domestic violence and about sexual assault, 
about prevention, intervention, and education, but because of the pandemic and being safer at home, we're in a, unable to do that. So we wanted to come into your homes today through the media to tell you a little bit about what we do here at the Branch House, which is a family justice center that serves victims of sexual assaults and domestic violence. So Mariah is gonna talk just a few minutes about the services that we offer here, which are confidential and free at Branch House. Hi, I'm Mariah and I'm the navigator at Branch House. My role is to help connect survivors to resources and programs available to them. Some of those resources include a safe place to shower, assistance applying for an order of protection, interpreter or translator services, safety planning, temporary emergency housing, budget management classes, counseling, court preparation, referral for civil legal assistance, advocacy or someone to sit with you in court, and transportation to court. Every client presents their own set of unique needs which we strive to meet through multidisciplinary collaboration, creative problem solving, and teamwork. My name is Katie and I'm the Coordinated Community Response Specialist here at Branch House. My primary function is to be a liaison to our three dozen official and two dozen unofficial partner agencies. I also do our community outreach, such as tabling events for volunteer recruitment and to raise awareness of our services. One of those services which we are proud to offer is our forensic exam unit, which is grant funded through the Office of Criminal Justice Programs and operated in association with Ballot Health. Our program allows for sexual assault victims age 13 and up to receive forensic sexual assault exam kits here on site. This not only creates a calmer and less chaotic environment for a very sensitive procedure, but it also creates less burden on emergency healthcare workers in light of recent pandemic related restrictions. Since many victims end up needing to surrender their clothes and shoes for evidence, another service we are proud to offer is making our hope and healing bags available both to clients and our on-site forensic unit, as well as when our advocates respond to local hospitals. These bags contain a new change of clothes, toiletry items, and comfort items to ease the process, which can be traumatizing in and of itself. Since pretty much all of these supplies are donated, it also presents the opportunity for our community to show their amazing support to our survivors. My name is Davis. I am the family advocate on the Sullivan County Overdose Response Team. I can help clients who are dealing with family members struggling with addiction and substance abuse issues. There's a lot of overlap that often occurs between substance abuse and domestic violence and sexual assault. My job at Branch House is to bridge the gap between clients and community services available to help families dealing with the difficult dynamics of substance abuse. If you feel you need any of the services at Branch House, we are available 24 seven. Just call 423-574-7233. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. We know these times are scary, but you're not alone. Branch House is here to help. Thanks, Debbie. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Inside Bristol. And now we've got Stephen Mott joining us, reminding us to complete those census questionnaires. Hey, it's Stephen Mott with the city of Bristol, Tennessee. I'm here to talk to you about the census. I'm also on the, the Complete Count Committee for our city, Bristol Counts, uh, and that organization is uh, it's comprised of both cities, uh, both school systems, um, both housing organizations, nonprofits that serve the area, uh, different uh, faith communities, and uh, area businesses. So. Why is the census so important and why are we all getting together? Uh, it really funds things in our community. It brings our tax dollars back to the community and your count matters. It matters so much that an undercount of one person can be over a thousand dollars of funding loss. And so what sort of things in the community does it contribute towards? We're looking at school breakfast programs, the roads, everyone's, you know, on the road in one way or another. So we want those to be nice. Uh, it also contributes to housing, energy assistance, all sorts of stuff for our community. So filling out your census, if you didn't get a card already, 
uh, with the code, you can go ahead and apply online at my2020census.gov. Uh, you can apply there without the code. If you got the code, it's useful because you won't get any mailers after, uh, but they are going to go ahead and start sending out paper forms for you to fill out. So the rates of response right now, the national average is 49.1%. Tennessee as a state, it's 48.6%. And Bristol, uh, Tennessee is at 47.3%. So we have a lot of work to do. Let's make sure you're counted. Fill out the census. If you need any other information, you can go to 2020census.gov uh, and you can fill it out, the application, at my2020census.gov. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you so much, Stephen, for that information. And I know we're all going to make sure we complete the census questionnaire. Well, that is it for today. And we thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. I just wanted to thank my daughter. She was my videographer today for today's show. So thanks, Anne-Marie. Yeah.